Hello and welcome to Inside Modular, the podcast of commercial modular construction brought to you by the Modular Building Institute. Today's episode is also brought to you by the now virtual Offsite Construction Expo, sponsored by MBI. Visit OffsiteConstructionExpo.com today to join industry speakers, exhibitors, and attendees for the first virtual expo of 2020 on September 16th and 17th. Now everyone can attend for only $199. That's OffsiteConstructionExpo.com. Welcome everyone. My name is John McMullen and I'm the marketing director here at MBI. Today I'm joined by Nick Gomez, studio director at Lowney Architecture. Nick is here to talk about designing for modular projects. Nick, thanks for coming on today. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. It is my pleasure. Um, so uh, tell me about Lanny Architecture and how you got started in modular design. Sure. So um, I joined Lowney Architecture six years ago. And when I joined at the time, Lowney Architecture was predominantly doing like 70% retail work and about um, 30% housing. Um, through a connection with uh, a friend of Ken Lowney, the principal, uh, who started Veda Communities, uh, Taiko Takagi, we started doing our first modular projects. Cool. So was there anything in particular that drew you to modular? Yeah. Um, you know, I had been in doing affordable housing for 15 years prior to joining Lowney Architecture. And some of that work also included K-12 work. So, you know, I was really aware of working with third-party regulatory review agencies, um, like on the K-12 projects, but I also did housing. So it was kind of a perfect match for um, doing modular projects here in California that requires a third-party regulatory review um, through the state of California. And, um, you know, doing affordable housing, I was always um, looking at how to make efficient buildings, right? You need to bring buildings in on budget. So, so you know, efficient buildings and understanding, you know, regulatory review process, I think was a perfect match for um, modular construction and something I, I was really interested in. Well, that's awesome. I know affordable housing is a big issue everywhere, particularly in California, but uh, even here in Virginia, uh, we're dealing with that a lot. So uh, kudos to you. That That's great. Um, what is uh, what is the architect's role on a modular project? You know, so it really depends on the um, project structure. And I, 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 I just sort of mentioned that because when, when I first started out, um, you know, Gurdon and Zeta would typically hire the architect who was doing the state sets. And so sometimes our role was to work for the factory. Um, you know, we've sort of moved away from that role model now. And, you know, now the factories prefer we work with the owner. But so I would say like in our current role, we're, we're more the ring leader of the project, um, you know, because the factory is hired by a, a contractor, but we're still responsible for you know, producing those state sets for the factory and then communicating everything back through the team and through the contractor who's actually going to install the project at the end. So, you know, there's a lot of um, coordination that we have to do. Um, you know, factory built housing projects just require um, a lot of coordination between the site and the factory work, but it also requires us to track details, not just through the factory, but through the contractor who has to install it. Gotcha. So uh, are, are there any other members of the team with whom you work uh, more closely than others, uh, say the, the engineers or the, the on-site installers or the, the factory staff? Is there a particular relationship that's, that, that is more suited for, for architects or do you work with the entire team? We work with the entire team, but I would say because uh, these projects are uh, very engineering based. Um, we do work a lot with structural engineers. Um, they they tend to be um, those are, those tend to be the problems that come up sometimes with the factory when they're building things, or they tend to be the things that we need to solve structural issues. Um, so it's structural engineer tends to be the person I have to talk to on a regular basis on these projects. And so. Is designing for modular very different than designing for a traditional stick-built structure, uh, and how so? Yeah, yeah, they're they're um, very different projects, and you know I could kind of say that having I think one of the few architects who's um, 
demodularize the project <laughs> for site build. So th they are different in the fact that, as I mentioned, structurally, you know, you're not only stacking things in the vertical direction with your shear and your mate walls, um, but you're also lining things up in the horizontal direction. And then on top of that, you kind of have the design parameters that you need to maintain for shipping. You know, there's height and length. So you, you do have to really sort of, you know, put all those pieces together, you know, in that 3D realm to kind of get that building to lay out properly. And so I, I imagine when you're learning how to be an architect, this is not something that's taught when you're getting your education. So did, did you have to, was there a learning curve in designing for modular buildings? Did you have to rethink, you know, how you had done everything in the past and come up with something new or how did you uh, adapt to modular? Yeah. So, you know, going back to some of our early collaborations with Data and Gurdon, um, you know, having to, you know, being able to work with the factories in sort of modularizing projects for them. So, you know, a lot of times ever, you know, when I first started, we would kind of get a project and it was like, hey, this, they can't build this project and they want to see if we can modularize it. And so, you know, learning with the factory as we sort of divided the project up into the modules that made the building, you know, and doing that enough times, which, you know, we've, we've done, you know, countless capacity studies for the factories and, you know, we've built, you know, probably now up to eight projects. So, you know, it, it was, a, it was a learning curve at first. Um, but, you know, again, kind of going back to my early desire to make very efficient buildings, it, it, it was something that just, you know, I was able to adopt and adapt to um, once you understand that you know those restraints which are the shipping um, you can you know still make really great buildings um, but you just need to adhere to the rigorous you know stacking both vertically and horizontally and and, and repeating things as much as possible you know that's kind of something that you you, you know the factories you know you want to give them as few components as possible you know just to maximize their production I see. Now, and what's the what's the advantage for you in designing for modular? You know, um, we're able to make buildings that are hopefully more affordable for the owner um, by utilizing offsite construction, and you know we're able to deliver projects faster and better quality. That's through the, the collaboration that we we get to do, and I I, I like the and I want to stress that word collaboration. You know, we're able, you know, it's really a collaborative process working with the factory, the contractors, and the engineers, you know, to sort of make these buildings. How would you judge your success on a project? What, what, makes, what would make you say, hey, I did a good job on that project? When the owner wants to do another project. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a that's successful good. project. <laughs> you know, we do have, um, and we do have those, uh, you know, um, Holiday Development has multiple projects. Of course, they started Factory OS, uh, Rick Holiday. Um, but, you know, you have people like Patrick Kennedy from Panoramic Interest who have done multiple um, modular projects. So, you know, they understand it. You know, you, you they've um, had to do the difficult decision making early on. And, you know, you kind of come to the end of the project. And, you know, they were, it was a learning curve for everybody. But, you know, they, they like the end result and they want to do it again. What do what do traditional architects need to know uh, before trying their hand at modular? Um, you know, here in California, with the dual regulatory review process, just that you you will have two sets of documents. You're going to have your state and your local set, and that scope needs to be very clear between the two. And you also there's a lot of coordination you have to do between the two things. You know, there's areas that the factory stops and the site work begins. And um, just knowing that the, also the factory moves at a quicker pace. So, um, you know, you will be doing CA twice. You're going to do CA for the factory scope and CA for the site scope. And, um, you know, the factory has a schedule that they need to maintain. So, you know, RFIs are shorter. And the middle process is shorter um, just because, you know, they can't have the production line stop. They need to keep moving. So, yeah, just, you know, a lot of collaboration and, you know, the dual permitting. I, I know all of us have been uh, stuck 
uh, where we are for for several months now uh, with the with the pandemic going on has the has the pandemic uh, affected you in the past few months personally um, no I mean I, I think I'm busier now than I was prior to um, my projects are all um, affordable housing right now, majority of them, one's not. Um, so they were deemed essential. So none of them did stop. And I've had a few projects actually start up during the pandemic. So um, great. we've been quite busy. And of course, the factories that we're working with are in production um, because, um, you know, they were working on affordable housing. So, yeah, I would say, you know, we're, we're still busy. There's still a need for housing. Um, so, you know, knock on wood, um, we're we haven't slowed down yet, um, and you know I don't see it slowing down for a while. Um, Good. I've been hearing similar home. things from a lot of the people I've talked to. They're they're busier than ever. They're able to work from home. Uh, they're just uh, they haven't been in, impacted yet. Uh, and, and like you said, I hope that doesn't happen. So tell me. Get a little tired of Zoom meetings, so, though. But uh, you know. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So tell me about an uh, interesting or exciting project that you're working on now. Yeah, so um, we're in the stages of getting ready to hopefully start stacking in early September, maybe late August, um, our Mayfair project in El Cerrito. And that is uh, going to be the second project, thir uh, third project um, that Factory OS is going to stack. Um, and it's a um, very prominent location right off our one of our uh, the BART station, which is our rail here in the Bay Area. And it, it has a large art component that faces um, the hills and the BART station. And um, we've really been able to push the sort of limits of modular construction. And we have an angled facade on the project that kind of weaves. And, you know, it's something that, you know, we were sort of, probably only able to do because holiday development is tied to factory OS. So they were willing to execute this design that was a little bit more complicated than maybe most factories would want to build. But, you know, they, they, they liked the design. They were, you know, they, we talked to the engineers, figured out how to, how to um, build it. And, you know, they were, they um, were willing to execute it. So it's going to be a really interesting project. You know, it's beautiful. Um, can't wait to get this thing stacked and clad and show some pictures. That's really cool. I've got some uh, friends in the Bay Area. I'll have to tell them to keep an eye out for it. Is that something that um, you'll be able to to keep us updated on as it as it goes up? I, I'd love to see pictures. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We'll we'll keep you guys posted and share some pictures. Great. Well, I think uh, I think that's all the questions that I had for you, Nick. I, I really appreciate your time today. I'm glad to hear you're doing well and staying busy. Uh, I I hope we can talk to you again soon. Yeah, stay safe, John, and thanks for having me on the MBI podcast. I really appreciate it. Sure. My name is John McMullen. This has been another episode of Inside Modular, the podcast of commercial modular construction. Until next time.